This is footage captured this weekend of Israel's border with Lebanon, where the Israel Defense Forces and Hezbollah continued to exchange fire. Many fear that Israel's war with Hamas could widen into a much larger regional conflict, one that sees Hezbollah, a formidable militant group in southern Lebanon, enter the conflict in a more pronounced way. The Canadian government is issuing a clear warning. My message to Canadians in Lebanon is, first, you need to come home. This is time to leave. Minister Jolie acknowledges the Canadian government is working on emergency evacuation plans. And for more on this story, I'm joined now by the Minister of National Defence, Bill Blair. He's in the foyer of the House of Commons. Minister Blair, it's good to speak with you again. Thank you, David. Well, what more can you tell me about the Canadian government's preparations for a potential mass evacuation of Canadian citizens in Lebanon? Yeah, we, we, we've, well, we've, we've looked very carefully at what happened in 2006 when we had to do a similar repatriation of Canadians. Uh, we've, we've already deployed um, a very significant number from, to, of Canadian Armed Forces members, both into Lebanon and to neighboring Cyprus. Uh, we've been working closely with Global Affairs and the Immigration uh, Re Refugee uh, Ministry. Um, we've, we've got assets in the region. There's, they're doing a lot of planning and preparation. Uh, at the current time, of course, there are, as Minister Jolie uh, indicated, there, there are uh, commercial flights available, and we're right. encouraging Canadians to take advantage of those uh, pre-existing commercial flights. However, should the situation deteriorate, we've got a responsibility to be ready, and the Canadian Armed Forces has been very, very proactive in, in going into the region and doing the work that will be necessary should it, that, that repatriation be required. Right, so you've had success getting people out of Israel uh, over the last week and, week and a bit, uh, but the numbers are much larger in Lebanon, as I understand it, Minister. Like, I think I saw 16,000, give or take, have registered uh, with Global Affairs Canada, but the estimates are believed to be much larger than that. I mean, I mean how many people are you talking about, Canadians who live in Lebanon, that you might have to help get, get to safety? Well, I, I can't tell you, David. There's a very significant number of Canadian passport holders, Canadian citizens, um, who are currently either visiting or resident in, in Lebanon. Um, the numbers are, could well, well exceed uh, the 20,000. It's one of the reasons we are encouraging and have been encouraging Canadian citizens there to take this opportunity using commercial flights to leave Lebanon and, and, to, and to return to Canada. For those who are una unable to, we want to make sure that um, in, in, in the last conflict, in our experience, for example, the Beirut airport quickly become, became unavailable to us. And so we're looking at all the different options available, alternative airfields, even some marine uh, options are being are being actively considered. We just want to make sure, again, out of an abundance of caution, uh, we think it's prudent to, to do those preparations now. Um, and you know, and God willing, if there, if the conflict does not spread into northern Israel um, and southern Lebanon, that that would be the best outcome. But should that happen? Uh, we want to make sure that we are there and prepared to help Canadians who may need our help. The, the marine options, I think I read in the Globe and Mail on Saturday that you're looking at cruise ships. I, is that a, an accurate uh, option that we're, has been put on the table? Yeah, we're looking at a number of different marine options. That could be a ferry ship, it could be a cruise. There are a number of options. We're, we're just trying to see what's available to us. I will tell you there are a number of other countries also looking in that region. So we're working very collaboratively with some of our international partners. But, but we have deployed a significant number of Canadian Armed Forces members who have a great deal of expertise in logistics planning for this type of an endeavor. Um, they have been actively involved, of course, in the repatriation of Canadians from Israel. Um, they'll take some of those skills and they're doing the work that is necessary now. Um, while we're still in a relatively safe and peacetime um, environment to do that work, in, at least in Lebanon and Cyprus, and to make sure that we're ready if we are required. Obviously, there is no advance warning of what happened in Israel on the morning of October 7th. Uh, there is uh, considerable runway before the potential escalation of things in Lebanon and ample time for people to get out. Given the warnings that have been issued uh, from Minister Jolie and others, and, and given the, the scale of, of this uh, evacuation, should it come to that? Uh, I, I mean, who pays for all of that? And, and, and do you have the capacity to do that, as, as people have been warned, that well, it is time to get out? We, we know. We, we've looked at, at what kind of logistics would be required in order to uh, facilitate that t that scale of an evacuation. It, it could take place over over a number of weeks. And, and yes, there'll be expenses um, involved. And it's one of the reasons we are encouraging people um, to, to take advantage of, of commercial flights. Our intention would be to get those Canadian citizens to a place of safety, very much as we did with, with Israel, where we were able to repatriate those Canadians who wished to leave Israel. We took them to Athens, where they could then catch commercial flights onward home. 
Um, and, and that enabled us to run a, for, for, for a considerable period of time two flights a day. Now those flights ended today. I'm going in, 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 into the Ben Gurion Airport in Tel Aviv. Um, we were able to repatriate about 1,900 Canadians from that situation. The Canadian Armed Forces did an extraordinary job, in my opinion, in, in, in ramping up and, and causing that to happen Wednesday after the beginning of, of the conflict on, on the Saturday. Um, but at the same time, the, the numbers have, have continued to drop. The demand for that, we're prepared, by the way, to ramp up if it's, if it's again required. But a lot of those resources and lessons learned will be applied should the situation spread to other regions, particularly in, in, in northern Israel and, and, and into Lebanon. So just a final point uh, on this topic, because I want to move on to, to another one in a second. The fact that you're in this level of advanced planning, what does that say about your risk assessment of the likelihood of Hamas entering this conflict? In well, a more meaningful way. Well, I, I think oh, sorry, Hezbollah, not Hamas. Well, I, I, you know, we're we're watching what we was some very concerning escalation, and, and I sh I saw the film you showed earlier, because there has been an exchange of, of munitions across that border in both directions, and some some uh, towns and villages that have been evacuated very close to the border. You know, we are concerned, and at the same time, we remain hopeful that there's, there is a very significant diplomatic effort going on involving a number of, of players in the region in order to avoid the, the spread of hostilities um, into, into, into that uh, Israel-Lebanese border. So we remain hopeful about those peace, peace efforts, and at the same time, it would be, I think it, it, it is absolutely incumbent upon us to make sure that we're ready. Should Canadian citizens in Lebanon need uh, Canada's help? We'll be there for them, and, and that's why we're getting ready. And I, I'd be quite pleased if, if all of that became um, unnecessary because uh, that, that, that conflict did not spread. But if it does spread, we want to make sure that we're ready to respond and to help the Canadians who will need our help. Okay, I want to ask you about the intelligence assessment that uh, you've done on, on the explosion at the Gaza hospital, because we've got a statement from you late on Saturday night saying that the Canadian Forces Intelligence Command concluded this was not Israel. Did you base that conclusion entirely on intelligence from the United States, from Israel? What went into that decision? Yeah, th th thanks. It's an important question. I asked the Canadian Armed Forces, I thought it was important for Canadians that they have an independent objective analysis done by a trusted Canadian authority, and I think the Canadian Armed Forces was that trusted authority. So I asked them to do a thorough analysis. They looked at, at, at the blast pattern from, and we, we had a lot of like, open source video imaging of, of the blast pattern um, at, in the hospital and some of the adjacent buildings. They were also able to look at, 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 at data show, showing the trajectory of munitions uh, uh, in that time and place. Um, and as well, they also had access to the number of classified um, intelligence uh, resources um, that they were also able to consider. Based on the totality of that analysis, they came to a conclusion with a high degree of confidence that that explosion did not result uh, from a missile from Israel. And, that, and they also determined a far more likely scenario was that the, the missile had originated in Gaza. Now, now, certainly, I think it's, it's, it's also evident that their analysis is entirely corroborated and consistent with what, what the United States, with France, and other allies have concluded. But this was the result of a, an independent, objective Canadian analysis of all the data that was available to them. And we looked at every source, including a lot of open source that you've been reporting on, Dan. Mm -hmm. Right. And the United Kingdom, uh, Rishi Sunak, the, the British Prime Minister, told MPs today that he, he came to a, a similar conclusion. But, you know, Minister, the initial reaction when, when a lot of people, including the media, were, were getting this story wrong, uh, you know, attributing it uh, to Israel for doing this, or what appears to be wrong based on the intelligence that, that Western allies have seen, uh, the Prime Minister responded in a way, and various members of government responded in a way that a lot of people have taken as a condemnation and as a criticism of Israel. There's still tweets up from Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie saying bombing a hospital is an unthinkable act. There's no doubt that doing so is absolutely illegal. What do you say to people like B'nai B'rith, who are on the show on Friday, saying that your government has left the impression that Israel did this? Yeah, and I would want to assure all of, all of our, our, our friends in the, in the Jewish community that we are not, we're, we're not attributing in any way this to Israel. And the information and the data, the analysis that have now been done, I think establishes with a high degree of confidence, rather conclusively, that Israel was not responsible for this. And at the same time, David, I, th I think it's important to acknowledge, I think we, we, all Canadians are concerned about the innocent loss of life in both Israel and in Gaza. And, and we are concerned about the safety of, of the Jewish population and the Palestinian population and the concern that, that was being expressed on, on the, the initial night of reporting, I think, reflected you know, the, the concern 
for innocent civilians that, that were caught in, in, in the situation. The information, there was a great deal of misinformation, as you said. That's one of the reasons I felt it was very important to provide Canadians with an independent and objective analysis of what had actually taken place. On Saturday, I briefed the Prime Minister and I said, here's the result of the analysis. This is the evidence that we've got. And a decision was made that we better share it with Canadians so that Canadians will know the truth. And, and that was important. And, and frankly, it doesn't in any way diminish our, our collective concern about the loss of innocent civilian lives on both sides of the border. Right. But, will, but will, will the government take a different approach, I guess, in, in responding to incidents like this? I mean, I have no idea what is going to happen next in this war. But you and I know that a ground invasion of Gaza, should it come to pass, is going to lead to some very awful moments uh, for the people engaged in that fighting and trapped uh, in that area. Uh, there, there will be things that come out of there. I mean, will the government take its time, or, or, or how will you change your public response to things? Well, things? Well, well, David, first of all, Israel was the victim of a very, very serious terrorism, terrorist attack from Hamas, and, and in which many of their citizens were, were brutalized and murdered. And, and we believe, and we've said unequivocally, that Israel has the right to defend itself from, from such terrorist aggression. And at the same time, I think all of us recognize that in any hostility, our concern now is also for the safety of innocent civilians. We believe that Israel has the right to defend itself, and at the same time, we are very concerned about the humanitarian impact. It's one of the reasons Canada's made significant new investments in, in, into Gaza to provide humanitarian aid. We've worked very hard to repatriate Canadians out of harm's way in those circumstances, but we also respect in, that, that Israel has a right to defend, to defend itself against that, that terrorism that, that invaded their country. Minister of National Defense, Bill Blair, thanks for your time tonight. Thanks very much, David.